Welcome back to Burning Over Bushcraft. Today we're going to be going over what I carry in my backpack for bushcrafting. So I'm kind of shifting my focus more for backpacking for a couple trips I've got this summer. But as a baseline of what I am and what I carry most of the time, I thought I would go over what I carry in my bushcraft bag. Now this bag, this is a Duluth Bushcrafter. Now I have a smaller bag as well. I have used the Campcraft Rucksack when I don't have this much gear in it. So the Duluth Bushcrafter is an enormous bag. It's heavy even without anything in it. And if you don't have big wool blankets and more winter type gear, it's really too much bag for you. So this is really loaded to about the max and I'm kind of surprised at the weight of this. With a more traditional internal frame backpack like this, I'm gonna have this weight down to around 15 pounds dry. So that's no food, no water. I would like to set up an ultralight kit as well. So an ultralight kit is something under 10 pounds. So when I started packing this up just to give, uh, you know, some semblance of what I normally carry, I was throwing an axe and a wool blanket and an oilskin tarp. I mean, I'm loaded here, and I honestly was expecting to be close to 50 pounds. This pack is 33 pounds dry. So there it is. I'm 33 pounds, 12 ounces, and that's a full-size axe. I've got a, a large folding saw. This is really set up for long-term living and bushcrafting and really living off the land and that's not bad i've carried this for years this is the standard bag that i used on a cold weather trip again i would go to a smaller bag in the summertime when i'm not quite carrying as much insulation so this is a tried and true bag some things i've switched over to but a majority of this bag is things that i've used from the beginning so i've used this time and time again when i get to the newer items i'm going to point that out to you so these are my three basic options for bags that I use most of the time now. An internal frame like this Big Agnes, this is a pretty good representation. The Duluth Bushcrafter or some other type of heavy duty wax canvas bag. And then lately I've been going to a canoe barrel for the canoe trips that I go on. And right away you see that this waxed canvas bag is shorter than the rest of these. Now the reason for that is these canvas bags became popular in canoe country. So you are going to be portaging a canoe most of the time that you're traveling. So the bag is going to sit below your shoulders. That works really well for portaging. That works really well for walking through extremely thick underbrush as well. So this is not exactly set up ready to go. Some of the items I don't have duplicates of, and those are in other bags because I'm using them right now. But this is a pretty good representation of what I've used for years and what works for me. So if I was going to any survival school, if I was going on a bushcrafting camp, if uh, somebody called and wanted me to go do a survival show tomorrow, this bag and a few more items would be what I take. I'll show features of the backpack as I come to it. Right on the outside here, you see I've got a center axe sleeve. And this is the main axe I've carried like forever. I've actually got two of these. This is an S.A. Wetterling's Fine Forest Axe. This is a 24 inch handle, so this is a little bit longer than the bag. The 20 inch handles were what a lot of the people were using when I initially started this venture. And this Fine Forest Axe is a pound and three quarter head on a 24 inch handle. And I don't know if this is made anymore, but this is perfect for me. I can use this like a hatchet. I've uh, chopped a ton of trees with this thing. I've done a lot of bushcrafting with it. It's a perfect ax for what I do. Now I've got two longer pockets in here as well. And these aren't loaded for bear. But again, this just gives you an idea. Now this is not something I used. This is something I use now. So this is the Grail water filter. It's pretty freaking awesome. Uh, anytime I go now, I use it. So I threw it in here. Back in the day when I first started this, these things weren't out yet. And usually it is boiled water in a metal container. So that Grail did not take up all that room. I could fit fishing kits and trapping kits and all kinds of cool things in here. On the other side, I've got the exact same pocket. And this is another new item. This is not what I carried back in the day. So this is a silky big boy. And this thing's nice. Uh, I've broken a smaller silky. The bigger ones seem like they're a lot more heavy duty and it's faster. What I traditionally used was a takedown buck saw. I had a wooden pole and paddle buck saw. So that was always with me. This has replaced it. It's faster to get into service and it cuts, cuts better in my opinion. So that's all that's in these pockets, but you know darn well I could fit a lot more there the entire length of the bag. Now on top of the bag, I've got tie downs. And I have used this for a sleeping mat before. 
it's pretty handy to have an extra place to tie things down. I don't use it a ton, but it's nice to have it as an option. Now on the side of the bag, I've got nylon straps to compress this down. Now I always thought this was kind of weird. This is wax canvas and leather. This is about as traditional a bag as you can get. And I always thought it was weird that Duluth put nylon straps on here. They worked fine. I've used this to hold a longer axe. I've used this to hold fishing rods in the past. And I've got, I've got those on both sides. Most of the time, these are cinched down because this is a very, very large pack. This holds a lot more gear than you probably need or even want to carry. I have a sleeve down here for a hip belt. I've never used the hip belt, not even one time. I took it out as soon as I got it and never saw the need to go with it. Now the straps on this is very comfortable. They are kind of a leather and a webbing combined. And then I've got leather adjustments. I also have a leather sternum strap here. So top quality. I just don't get why they went with nylon and the plastic buckles on the side. It has worked. It's never failed me, but it really doesn't fit the look of the entire pack. So these buckles look awesome and they're super durable, but they're slow to get into. Uh, at a class, if you're told to get something out of your bag, you're supposed to dig for something specific for a portion of that class. It's slow to go through the drawstring and undo your buckles. Sometimes I don't do my buckles just for that reason. So it looks cool, but it's probably not the most functional thing out there. So up top, I do have a flap, and I have used that for maps in the past, but I don't carry anything in there on a regular basis. A notebook I keep in my haversack, which is carried inside the bag. So everything I've got in my bag is big and bulky and heavy. Nothing is looked at as far as weight. I always go for durability and strength and multifunction on a bushcraft kit like this. Because I'm using minimal items all the time, even though they are big and heavy, I think that's why it's gonna be an easy transition for me to get into lightweight and even ultra lightweight backpacking. So right here on top, I've got my haversack. Now, the haversack is something that as soon as I set my bag down, I'm gonna pick this up and go. It's not always in my backpack. Most of the time, I'm gonna be carrying that over my shoulder with my backpack on my back. That way I can just cinch the sides down and I'm carrying less gear with me. When I'm canoeing, my haversack is uh, strapped to the seat right beside me. So this is something I keep handy, but when I'm traveling or when I'm packing for a trip, I like everything to be able to fit inside one bag if it's at all possible. So here's the haversack that came out of there and this is another one of those newer additions. I've carried a haversack since I started uh, normally it's just an envelope style, more traditional haversack. So this is the indie bag from Camp Craft. It's an updated version. I've got more dividers. I've got more pockets. This uh, is going to get its own video. So everybody keeps asking about a haversack loadout. This is really, um, I'm independent of everything with this. The main bag has a lot of things that I like to have with me. I've got my sleep system, I've got my cook system, but I can get by completely with this bag. I haven't weighed this one, but normally these bags are around 10 pounds. Let's see. Let's see what this one is. And I am nine pounds, 4.6 ounces. So that's pretty close. And this is almost to a T, the things that I've carried from the beginning. So this gear has been with me through tons of survival classes, through a bunch of trips, through a bunch of uh, skills training when I'm just out working on things. Everything in here is proven, but some of the stuff is newer. A lot of the stuff is just been updated over time. So again, this is not everything that's gonna be in the bag at all times. You can see I've got my belt knife in here. I've got a belt pouch in here, but I'm gonna go over all the contents. Basically, this is the complete 10 C's or the 11 or 12 C's, depending on which school you go to. So I'll give you a full breakdown on the contents of this in another video, but this is really something I won't travel without. When I make a lightweight backpacking kit, I will have a survival kit that covers all of these basics. When I get into the ultra lightweight backpacking kits, I'm going to do my best to cover all the bases with this. Uh, it may not look exactly like this, but I will have all these bases covered. There's not a whole lot in here now, but it's just big. Everything's just big and heavy. So I have a... Pathfinder special, full size blanket. So this is a queen. This is 100% wool. I've carried this in various ways. I've made bed rolls using my uh, 
tarp as well with this. So I went an entire season with just this wool blanket. I carried it through the winter camps. I carried it even through the summer. And even in the warmest months, it still got cold enough in the evenings that I was happy to have this with me. This is great, but this is not something I'm going to be carrying in my lightweight backpacking kit. So there's my bedding. My heavy-duty shelter component is next in here. And this is a 9 foot by 9 foot oil skin tarp. So this is freaking outstanding. This is tent smiths. The quality on this is just amazing. Now, I hammock camp most of the time, so I haven't used this as much as I probably should. But when you unroll this thing, it is it's amazing. I've used this for an improvised pack as well with a Roycroft pack frame. I've set this down and used it for a ground cloth. But again, this is too big and too heavy for modern backpacking trip. So with a big bag like that, I gotta have some more gadgets in there, right? Not really. We're getting down to the nitty gritty now. I've got a bush pot next. And this is in a camp craft bag. I have had multiple bush pots. This is the one I use the most. And this is pretty standard. The uh, the Morse pot, the aluminum Morse pot, actually melted the thing, making char cloth. But this is something that I've used for years. I've made a ton of meals in here. I've made countless cups of coffee. I've used it to make dye. I've used it to make medicine. Absolutely love it. But again, this is too large for a backpacking trip. But as far as durability goes, man, I'll take this any day of the week. So as I mentioned, I am not completely loaded, and I said that before the video. So normally, I keep coffee in here, I keep my silverware in here. I just didn't do that in this video, but you kind of get it. Anything that I'm going to need to cook with is going to be in here. But one thing I did not carry is a stove, and that was a mistake. Any bushcrafting or survival type camp or classes I ever went to, it was campfire cooking and that was it. So this thing, most of the time, was hung over the fire. I would sit this right in the coals. Uh, when I started doing more traveling and more trips and you're just eating as maintenance, you're not really, you know, it, making this big lavish meal and trying to make bannock and, and pine needle tea and cool things like that. You're just trying to get nourishment and move on with the day. A stove is something I will not travel without. The stove that I have most fitting for this is just something I can burn sticks off the ground. That way I'm a longer term situation. I don't have to worry about fuel. I have carried my Kelly kettle in this thing a lot. My Kelly kettle fits right beside that wool blanket. I've got multiple sizes of them. My G2 flat back firebox stove would fit in here as well as my Uberleben flat pack. I just got one from the Apaka box as well. So any of those fold down stoves don't take up any space. And when I'm taking the Kelly kettle, that's a whole cook system. So I'm willing to put up with the weight for that. But that's one thing that I did not carry and I do not have packed that I will not travel without again on purpose. So the last thing I've got, this thing is not packed either. So this is again dry weight. So I've got no water, I've got no food. I believe they call this the camp pantry. I don't remember. And I've got two sizes of these. So I've got six of these tins in here and I'm not sure if this is something they still make anymore or not. Uh, I always have one of these in, with coffee in them and usually it's a larger size of this. I've used Bannock in here, a Bannock Max. I've carried instant rice. Uh, even if I'm not carrying just food, I could get probably three to four days worth of food in here easy, and maybe stretch it to a week. But my thought would be to carry ingredients. I'm going to carry salt. I'm going to carry maybe a breading for some fish and then supplement what I can catch and what I can trap with what's in this bag. If this is the kind of thing you'd like to see, go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment in the comment box and ring the bell to be notified of my latest videos. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at Burning River Bushcraft. I also teach outdoor classes at OutdoorCore.com. So if you were taking a survival class, pack what's on the pack list, but a kit like this is going to be just about perfect. If you were going to spend a longer term time in the woods, awesome. There's things I would add to this for sure. Uh, if a TV show called and said, hey, Jamie, we're going to fly you somewhere and you've got to live until everybody else is dead, this is what I'm taking. This is all proven gear. Uh, I'm going to go over what's in my 10-piece kit or my haversack kit in another video. That's all the odds and ends, my knife and my ferro rod and fire starting kit. What I don't have in here is any of the smaller kits, so I don't have a trapping kit. 
I don't have a fishing kit. I don't have a hunting kit, a, a takedown bow, or a sling bow. I don't have anything like that. But I've got God's plenty of room to add anything that I choose to. I would end up choosing just not to carry something because of weight before I ever ran out of room in a bag that size. This is all great stuff, and my standard GORUCK bag has a 30-pound weight in it. So I have some odds and ends, so I'm probably right around this 33-pound load on a regular basis. But this is not something where I'm going to be doing any elevation here. I'm going to be going to a couple different destinations, and I'm going to be going up and down hills pretty steeply. So I'm going to dive into this lightweight backpacking thing. I'm going to give it a try. So this is going to be quite a stretch for me. There are certain items that I'm going to be missing. There are certain items that I wish I could have with me that I'm not, and I'm just used to having. But I can work my way around it because I'm used to minimal gear camping and bushcrafting. As long as I have enough tools just to make things in the woods, I'm going to be just fine. Till next time, this has been Jamie Boggs with Burning River Bushcraft. See you soon.